Welcome to this mini webinar on frustration. Now at first glance frustration seems a little bit useless. We know that when we get frustrated with our dogs it doesn't seem very productive and when our dogs get frustrated with us that doesn't seem very productive either. However frustration is really useful. The purpose of frustration is to allow the individual to seek out a solution to the problem and then in doing so they achieve the reinforcement for the work that they've put in and that, and that will improve their effort the next time. So if we look at that dog that's uh, trying to go under the bed there, what's happened in that case, obviously, his toy has rolled under the bed. Now if that's a new occurrence for him, he's probably going to get a little frustrated, he's going to run around the bed, his activity is going to increase, his arousal is going to increase, he might try to dig a little bit, he might start barking, but at some point he's probably going to crawl under the bed. And at that point he's going to access the toy, so he's achieving the reinforcement for his work, and that's going to improve his effort next time. And in fact, in that same situation, he'll be much quicker to find the solution. Uh, but even in other situations, it will encourage him to put in effort to find a solution because that's, that strategy has been successful for him in the past. Now, we can utilize this knowledge in our training. We can make sure that we set goals that are a little bit hard for the dog, a tiny bit frustrating, that make them work a little bit to achieve that uh that goal and then that allows them to access the reinforcement that we have available for them and that will improve their effort the next time. Now when we talk about other attributes uh, with our sports and performance dogs or working dogs uh, we look at not only their determination to seek a solution to a problem but also their energy levels. So these are the two really big components that will help us uh, help our dogs find solutions to problems and be successful. So if we have a dog that's where that X is, it's got high energy levels, so it can put a lot of effort into finding a solution, and it's very determined to find a solution, what lives there is those highly successful elite level working and sports dogs. But you know what else lives at that X? Dogs that have big behavioural issues. So as a behaviour consultant, I do see a lot of these dogs. I see a lot of dogs that are high energy dogs that have a big determination to seek out solutions when they're faced with a problem. The issue being that if that problem is simply that one of their treats went down the back of the sofa or their toy is stuck under the sofa, those dogs potentially will actually destroy the sofa in order to access that treat or in order to access that toy. And certainly these dogs also perform lots of escape behaviours from confinement because the frustration leads them to seek out a solution to their problem. Now, the average pet home is just a little bit better off often with a dog that's a little got a little bit less drive to seek out a solution. So dogs that genuinely, if their toy goes under the lounge, under the sofa, they may wander past uh, a few times, see if they can get to it. They may have a little paw at it. Uh, they may put their head under there. But when they decide that there's not really a solution, they're very comfortable to walk away from that situation. They're very relaxed about just wandering off and finding something else to do. So I'm not talking about dogs that internalize that frustration and just quit. I'm talking about dogs that genuinely just don't have the same desire to seek out a solution. So that might be uh, really great in a pet home. Of course, you can see that can be a little problematic with uh, our competition dogs or dogs that we're attempting to train. We do really do need that determination to seek out a solution, even though we can find that particular quality quite challenging at times. So now we want to have a look at the different approaches an individual can take when they're trying to find a solution to a problem. Now, there's approaches that are very adaptive. This is often when the increase in arousal due to the frustration causes an increase in energy, and this causes the individual to find a solution. There are maladaptive responses that can occur though, and this is when the extra arousal due to the frustration actually causes the animal to avoid finding a solution to the problem. So that's not very useful, obviously. Now, this is the same for humans, the same for dogs, the same for other animal species. So we're going to have a look at a couple of these approaches now. So type one, this is the action-oriented approach. This is an adaptive 
uh, method in that the animal will uh, be driven to find a solution because as they become frustrated and their arousal increases, uh, the energy level of the dog increases and they're going to perform active behaviours that are likely to help them find a solution. So we may see though in the process as these dogs that are getting frustrated and over aroused, we may see barking, pawing, digging or scratching at the target. Uh, we may see them performing other previously reinforced behaviours. So they can't find a solution to what we're asking for now, but what if they throw in a bow or a spin or a down, they're looking for a way to solve the problem. Uh, mouthiness often happens with these dogs, so they might start snapping at the food, grabbing the treats a little harder and quicker. Uh, you might see them chomping on toys. We might see them biting at the leash or uh, tugging at people's clothing. Uh, that can escalate all the way through to redirected aggression, redirecting on the handler or redirecting onto a nearby dog or other uh, person if they become so frustrated in trying to find a solution. Uh, they will often ignore cues as that arousal increases, but remember that it's pretty evident that these dogs are, are going to ignore the cues because we can see at this point they're at high arousal. They might be spinning in circles, barking, jumping, running off. We, we know that we're asking them to follow an instruction and they just can't. Uh, displacement behaviours in these dogs are usually going to be high energy. So the zoomies, for example, they're going to start running really fast and doing laps or spinning in circles. Now what about the type 2 style? This is an avoidant style, so it's very maladaptive. It doesn't help the dog find a solution at all. Uh, we might see in these dogs that they appear to quit. They might walk away. They might lie down. Often they'll just lie flat on their side and sigh. Uh, we can see vacant staring. Sometimes they're literally staring at us. Sometimes they're staring at the ground or staring at the wall or just gazing and staring in the distance, maybe casually gazing around the horizon. Um, these dogs will usually start to move slower and slower, often eventually stalling. It's almost hard to get them moving again. Uh, these dogs also will ignore cues uh, and be slow to respond to cues, but it can be harder for a handler to understand this because with those dogs that are highly aroused and energised, those dogs are spinning in circles and barking and leaping and it can be very easy to understand that they can't follow a cue because they're busy. Um, but for these dogs, sometimes they're staring at us. They're staring at us and they're very still or slow. And then we're asking them to follow an instruction and they just can't. They're so high, highly aroused mentally, they can't focus enough to give you uh, the behaviour that you're asking for, even if it's a really simple behaviour. The problem for the human involved in this is when a dog's staring at you, and appears to not be engaged in anything else, then it can be very hard to understand why they're not following instructions. So they can be misread as a dog that's blowing someone off or just choosing to ignore the person, which is certainly not what's happening. These dogs are, are just so over aroused. They can't um, follow the cue. Uh, rejecting food is very common in these dogs. Um, again, you will see it in a dog that's energized and highly aroused, uh, but you will definitely see it in these dogs that uh, where the energy level drops when they get over aroused. So they'll reject food and often very early in the arousal process. The displacement behaviors in this case, more likely to see low energy uh, displacement behaviors. So maybe sitting down and scratching behind their ear, maybe doing full body shake, maybe just wandering off and sniffing the ground. Uh, so much more low energy uh, displacement behaviors. Now the generic stress signals, uh, that lip licking, yawning, um, tongue flicking, that may be evident with type one or type two uh, responses. The big problem with this type two is because their behaviours don't help them find a solution. So they're not going to stumble upon the solution while they're performing like this. Because of that, they don't achieve reinforcement. Because they don't achieve reinforcement, it leads them to put in less effort the next time. So instead of that really nice response to frustration, uh, the really normal adaptive response where we see an individual become frustrated, that drives them to find a solution, the energised uh, behaviour uh, helps them to get to the solution. When they find the solution, they achieve reinforcement and that helps them to put in more effort the next time. These dogs do a terrible cyclical thing, these type 2 dogs, where what happens is they don't put in the effort to find a solution. Because they're not putting in behaviours that help them find a solution, they're not going to achieve reinforcement. Because they don't achieve reinforcement, that actually leads to them putting in less effort the next time.
We can even see these dogs go all the way through to avoiding training altogether. So as soon as they see you start to set up for a certain type of uh, training session, they literally walk off or they start sniffing the ground or they look away, look the other way. They just avoid uh, getting uh, gazing into you or the situation. You can even see dogs visibly escape. Just leave the scenario while you're setting up and try and find their bed or something. Uh, so this type two is very stressful for the dog. It's important to note these dogs are still highly aroused. So if we look at the, uh, the physiological uh, links to arousal, we know that these dogs are still going to have increased heart rate. They're still going to have an increased respiration. Uh, the pupils are going to be dilated. Uh, the dog's going to have uh, increased uh, circulating hormones associated with arousal. So these are not dogs that have just not got frustrated. That's a different thing. Dogs that just genuinely don't get very frustrated, like those pet dogs we spoke about that have not much drive to find a solution, but they're genuinely happy and relaxed. Their arousal hasn't increased. They just don't really care much for finding a solution. They wander off. But those dogs are relaxed and happy and calm and still able to follow cues and still able to respond because uh, they're not over aroused. These dogs, these type two, uh, this avoidance style um, problem solving, this is uh, a dog that's highly aroused. Now it's important to note that we've talked about this as though we have a type one or type two dog. That's not quite true. Although individuals will lend themselves to being, uh, to, to having one approach or another to problem solving as an overall rule. So when they get too frustrated, certain individuals, humans or dogs, certain individuals will tend to go towards being a type one problem solver or a type two uh, response to problem solving. But it's actually very variable. People can, uh, and dogs as well, can have a type 1 response in some situations and type 2 response in a different situation. Can be to, to do with whether they believe that they can find a solution or not. Uh, as in, if it's a task that they've been successful at in the past, they might become a type 1 problem solver. But if this is a task that they know they've been unsuccessful at multiple times, they may appear to quit and walk away. Doesn't mean they're not frustrated, it's just that they don't believe they can find a solution so they're, they're going to be highly aroused, they're going to be frustrated, maybe a person might go away and slam some doors, um, but they're going to um, not continue to seek to find a solution to the problem. So uh, the good part about the fact that this is variable though is it means we can influence it. So even though there might be some genetic predisposition and certainly prior life history can lead a dog to be a little more type 1 in their approach or a little more type 2, we certainly can help a type 2 dog uh, become more interested in finding strategies to help them find solutions and then in doing so they achieve reinforcement and then their confidence builds and then they're more likely to put in a little more effort uh, into finding a solution themselves the next time. And it's also important to note that in individual settings, these dogs can be quite different. So maybe we have a dog that's been very successful in nose works, they see a nose work set up and they're quite type one oriented, they're going to find a solution to that problem. Or maybe in agility, they've been very successful, they're going to jump in and, and be active and, and if they have a problem that they're being faced with, they're going to jump in and find a solution. But maybe with the dumbbell, they've been unsuccessful. Maybe the dumbbell has caused some stress and anxiety. Maybe they've never quite worked out what you're trying to do. And so they see the dumbbell come out and guess what? They go to a type two response. They might become avoidant and they might just look away from the, the dumbbell and look away from you and start sniffing the ground. So it could be any particular setting where they've had lots of success in the past. They might take that type one approach if they haven't had success in that setting in the past, they might take that type two approach. And that's why we need to, as the handlers, jump in and help these dogs be successful so that they can take a more type one approach to problem solving in the future. So I hope you've found uh, that little bit of information on frustration uh, interesting. And if uh, you're interested in any, in any of my upcoming uh, presentations, they're listed there. If any of those topics interest you, I'd certainly uh, love to see you there. Bye for now.